Hi there, everybody. I'm Fred Thomas, and you are watching All Things Bike. And today we are speaking with Jared Buzzle, physical therapist and bike fit specialist at OA Centers for Orthopedics. Jared, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, anytime. Hey, look, we'll explain um, um, a little bit about OA Centers for Orthopedics and the Performance Center, where, sure. where it's located. Yeah, OA, uh, OA is essentially um, a specialty orthopedics pra practice mm -hmm. that covers the entire continuum of orthopedic care. So um, from physician services, um, including uh, on-site surgery at our Portland office, mm -hmm. uh, imaging, uh, on-site MRI, x-ray, to physical therapy and rehab, which is what I do, and then, um, and then taking that a step further with a performance, uh, performance model and sports mm -hmm. performance and, um, and skill development. So mm -hmm. um, we uh, it started back in the early 80s, um, three physicians, and it's grown now to a company of over 20 physicians and surgeons, and we have uh, 20, about 25 therapists, mm -hmm. uh, four locations, um, and I manage the physical therapy center down in Saco. Mm -hmm. We built that center in um, 2008, right. and that was our first. Um, that was our attempt at kind of um, taking this continuum a step further with the performance center. Mm -hmm. And so the point of the performance center was to get a hold of those athletes before they got injured, and then to have a place um, with the people who are rehabbing to kind of feed back into, so they can stay in this continuum of care. Right. Um, so we could we could. You know, we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of issues with like non-contact injuries, right. athletes that were getting hurt running down the field and making a cut. Right. And so this is a way um, this is a way to get a hold of those folks, teach them the skill of movement, how to jump, how to decelerate, how to run efficiently. Wow, right. That's interesting. So it, it really it's not it's not an indoor track where, where people are just running around or doing weight training or, or that kind of thing. It's more um, learning how to run maybe and learning how to recover. Um, right. Um, anyone in there learning how to pedal? I mean, are there are there courses about pedaling technique, for example? Um, there aren't about pedaling technique, but um, one thing that's unique to the therapist at OA is, mm -hmm. you know, we all could get a, a knee injury or a shoulder injury or back injury better, but we've been pushed to kind of develop our, our subspecialties, and that's unique to physical therapists. Mm -hmm. And so we have therapists that are very passionate about throwing, and we have we have they deal with the overhead athlete and getting that that thrower to be able to do that appropriately. My interest relies on the endurance athletes. So I have done, been able to go out and do a lot of work with um, looking at, at runners and running mechanics and cyclists and be able to get out and, and um, go out to uh, California. Uh, Dan Amphil's place, Slow Twitch, is where I got my certification oh, yeah. through. And so um, that's a service that we offer. And if you think about an injury, if you're dealing with a cyclist that rides a 10 to 15 hours a week or, or more in some cases, and they have a back injury, and you treat that back injury and get it better. If you're not looking at them on their bike and making sure they're fit correctly, you're kind of throwing them back into um, a potential fire when they right. get back to riding. So, right. Because um, you haven't really isolated the the problem. Exactly. Uh, um, interesting. Well, we'll explain more about your personal connection to endurance sports. I mean, were, were you a triathlete or runner? Or sure. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was. Uh, I was a, kind of a team sports growing up. Um, did a little mountain biking. My uncle was a big mountain bike racer, but I grew up in Vermont, so oh, I did a little go. bit of that. Yeah. Uh, and then got into running, and actually it was PT. It was a lot of my clients that were. Mm -hmm. uh, that I was treating some triathletes, and they kind of kind of pulled me into it. So back in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. Tri Maine was really big around the area, putting on a lot of local races. Oh, yeah. And so I tried my hand in that, got a bike, and uh, and really loved. I mean, just really loved the bike, gravitated towards that. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I've I've done races of all distances. Right. Um, done I've raced Ironman. I've raced. Um, but I was lucky enough to qualify for World Championships in the half Ironman distance and raced that. Um, and have yeah. done, uh, you know, done some isolated bike racing as well. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. had have some, had a couple spills with that, but oh, um, gosh, yeah. oh, it's part of the part of the risk, I guess. With I know. That well, sport. that's that's how a lot of people end up um, visiting the exactly. OA centers for orthopedics. But <laughs> but um, it's you know, you guys are expert in getting us all back on the on the road. But um, how about this? Um, the biomechanics. Um, I mean, that's a term that that seems to uh, come up a lot with physical therapy. Uh, what are the biomechanics of cycling? Um, as far as you can tell. Sure. So, you know, the biggest thing when I talk to a patient about that is the contact point. So on a bike, there's five contact points. And in my opinion, so you get the, the saddle, so where you're sitting, your pelvis, right. right? Your two hands and your two feet, right? So those okay. are your contact points. And any one of, the, any one of those points can have um, 
excessive pressure or force sure. if things aren't fit correctly. That's interesting. I mean, most people say it's three, right? But they're not breaking out the feet and right. the hands. Right. Um, that's great. So you've already innovated and, right. and well, drilled and down. Because of imbalances, someone may be favoring one side, right? right? So they may have a wrist or, or foot issue more prevalent on one side because of imbalances that are going further up the chain. So yeah. I feel like it all starts at the, at the pelvis. And if you can get that pelvis set correctly, it, um, you're able to utilize, you know, utilize the muscles in the proper sequence and um, allow for proper joint motion to occur. Right. And, and do you do you study this with a video camera when when patients come in, or do you how do, how do you yes. determine it? So with my uh, with my assessments, um, you know, I'll put a I'll put a client through a physical assessment first, just mm -hmm. like I would with any physical therapy patient, mm -hmm. uh, because I want to get a sense of how they move off the bike. Somebody may have a restriction in their hip that. Or their, or their neck, for instance, that, that will limit my ability to fit them into an aggressive position. I so I, I want to kind of pick that out and pick out any imbalances I can get off the bike. But yeah, we use, uh, we use video, um, and I think that's important uh, to have a dynamic fit. Uh, if someone's pedaling, right, and they pedal with a, with a bit of toe points, mm -hmm. and you measure that statically, and they're dropping their heel, and you don't catch that, that knee angle is going to be very different. So I try to do a, a dynamic fit. I look at, um, you know, we look at, at slow motion video from, um, from the front, from the back. Uh, I like to use lasers from the front so I can really watch that knee and how it's tracking right. to determine if the stance width needs to be sh narrowed or wider right. um, based on if they're, if they're knocking their knees in or bowing out or whatnot. Right. And then, yeah, from the side view, you can, you can stop right where you need to to get all those, those joint angles. Right, right. So we're not, we're, the, the days of a plumb line uh, with, with with what, a line and a yeah. lead weight at the end. Yeah, and I, and I do use that over. for a little fore aft measurement. Uh, I, mm -hmm. still, I still do utilize that. And throughout the fit, with some quick checks, we'll, we'll, I'll get an I idea see. of where the ankle needs to be, so I'll do it. But, but throughout the fit, you know, it's a series of, of video, mm -hmm. make some small adjustments, re-video. And we're always, I'm always comparing to that initial fit. So by the end, that's this one of the products a client will get. It's kind of like the before and after right. side by side picture right. um, of where we brought them. Yeah, wow, fascinating. And, then, and what about uh, muscular, musculoskeletal um, uh, issues? I mean, is this, is this what you're looking for when you do an evaluation? Um, explain that term a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, and really with the cyclists, there's, there's a couple common ones that do come out because we're kind of stuck in that position yeah. uh, a lot where the front of the body tends to get a little tight. Uh, there's a lot of cyclists that tend to be quad dominant athletes, um, and that may not present too much of a problem on the bike, um, mm -hmm. but can be a problem in life. Yeah. You know, if you're, very, if you're too quad dominant, you can, you're gonna have to get motion from somewhere. And if, if you can't get it through the hip because the quads are tight, right. you'll end up getting it through the pelvis or the spine and that can cause uh, mm -hmm. issues with the day to day. So, right. um, so yeah, we get, a lot of, we get a lot of input from the physical assessment um, mm -hmm. in regards to those imbalances. And I try to give people a few things as, you know, as part of what can you do off the bike to help keep yourself more balanced. Yeah, yeah, well that's, that. I mean, that's, yeah, talk about that. That's something, I, it'd be great to, to drill down to, um, uh, yeah, what can we do? And stretching and yoga and yep. um, what else is on that list? And, it, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a loaded question because it's so individualized. Right. And there's some athletes out there that are really hypermobile, they, they almost have too much mobility, and those are the folks that need to stabilize. So it really depends on, on the individual, but in general, cyclists do tend to, the position, we tend to be locked up. So the more we can yeah. kind of do things to open the chest up, maintain mobility through the thoracic spine, you know, front, front of the thighs, um, front of the thighs, front of the hips, kind of keeping those open. So, right. you know, the, the, the good old foam roller and those, those self-massage tools are really important right. um, to help stimulate recovery and help combat some of the effects of, uh, some of the natural effects of aging. That just is kind yeah. of what happens as we get older anyway. We get a bit stiffer. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I found, a, I went to a, 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 a temple, a Buddhist temple in Thailand. And um, in order to, to go into the temple, at some point you have to sit in the, the lotus position, I think. You don't have to, but you, you, a lot of people were, and, and I'm, are basically cross-legged. And I could not do it. I, I am at a point where I just absolutely cannot get my legs to fold over in that, in that uh, manner. So um, yoga, stretching probably. And yeah. What are, what are the, the basic stretches that... So, you know, um, for cyclists in general, basic stretch, uh, good old, your good old quad stretch where you're, where you're grabbing the ankle or putting the ankle on something behind you. Mm -hmm. um, stand up here or not. I guess I can stand up, get plenty of room. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, essentially grabbing that. And the biggest mistake people make with this is they tend to arch the back. Oh, yeah. So if it's too tight, it's gonna cause that pelvis to arch and rotate forward. So right, the key right. is, 
you got to lock that down by kind of tightening the abdominals, keeping, right. keeping that pelvis in position. So now you're getting the motion through the hip right. and really stretching the, the thigh that way. Right, right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, any stretching is good stretching, yeah. I imagine. Well, and the rolling, <laughs> the rolling of piece it. of it, you know, the research says if you roll for 20 seconds, it improves muscle flexibility by 10%. So, this is on the rollers. The, yeah. those, so, yeah. so doing a little self-massage pre-activity um, pre or pre-stretching really can help get there a lot quicker. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I've, I've, I've adopted that and um, it, you know, it feels like I'm getting a, a, a nonstop noogie, but, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I think it helps. Well, um, that's great. Well, um, let's back up and, and, and describe your, your athlete patients or the people who, who are coming in to see you and where yeah. are they from? What, what kind of disciplines are they? Yeah. So, um, you know, because of, because of, uh, of the niche I've kind of got myself into with the endurance athlete, mm -hmm. a lot of my referrals are uh, of that, of the, of the self-referral basis. And mm -hmm. patients get hurt. And in Maine, you're lucky enough where you can just, you can, we have that, that ability to come directly to the physical therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I deal a lot with a lot of the coaching groups in the area. So a lot of the coach, I'll get those athletes that they send to me as well. So it's been, it's been, a, been a great referral source for me, and I enjoy mm -hmm. I enjoy treating that. So it's primarily the Greater Portland area, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a, a coach up in Camden, Maine, and I've seen a, I've seen a, quite a few of his athletes. He'll still send down periodically when they get um, bike or run related issues. Right. Um, I've had people as far as you know Vermont drive over for a bike fit right. because they saw that I was certified. You know, had that slow switch certification. Right, right. Um, so you know we do pull from all over, but the patients that are coming in on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, a few a couple times a week, uh, a lot of draw from Kenny Bunk. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a lot of that Saco Scarborough, right. Gorham area, and and um, juniors, masters, or, or yeah, all, all um, across. I'd say probably. You know, there's been some juniors we've done them on, but it's been mostly probably 25 to mm -hmm. 65 range. You know, and I say mm -hmm. the people that are running into more of the problems are probably are probably 40 plus. You're right. You know? Yeah. Well, um, no, that's to be um, expected, I, I suppose. Um, I was going to ask you um, about the evaluation process, and, and you've already, I think, described it. Is there anything we, we have missed um, that's worth mentioning in your evaluation when, when I walk in and say, Yeah, um, yeah so, problem? you know, that, that physical assessment is so important, and, right. um, you know, um, that, that's a big, big part of it. And again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, posture, range of motion, functional movements, we take people through a series of these, of these right. tests. Um, and then the actual bike fit, I mean, as we're, as we're, you know, taking that video and finding things, I like to start kind of from the back of the bike right. and work my way forward. So I'm always trying to get that seat, right. you know, get that seat, get that pelvis set correctly first. And from there, kind of work my way, work my way to the front. Right. Uh, and I, I typically save my cleat adjustments for last. And just because, you know, um, and it's not something a lot of cyclists are aware of, but stance width. So those cyclists yeah. that really tend to drive their knee in as they're yeah. as they're pedaling down right so this this is an, an, is this the injury an anterior um knee pain that, that could be could be it could be saying? that that is a common one mm -hmm. um it could lead to a host of different troubles it could lead to some achilles issues some issues through the foot as well right. uh, or even hip because that that femur is diving into the into the acetabulum right. into the socket right. so, so so if i say anterior um, knee pain you would be zeroing in on the on the cleats and um, the pedals and per perhaps uh yeah. perhaps a lot of that is saddle position too if the saddle's okay. too low right. um or you know anything that's going to overload that patellofemoral joint overload that quad so right, right. it may be it, you know it could be their style of pedaling and right. one of the things i try to tell people is it's a, it's a it is a circle right the 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 most crank arms although there's some orbital ones now yeah, but right. I, I like to think about the pedal stroke as like the the bars on a locomotive where it's more of like a forward forward backwards than an up and down right um and really try to get folks especially with the patellofemoral pain to utilize more of the posterior chain uh and even that power back through the bottom of the pedal stroke Right, right, yeah. Well, um, how about um, neck pain? I mean, there's so many. There's a, a long list of of, uh, of pain that that we can choose from. But yeah. let's work our way down from from the top. And, sure. Um, um, if I come in and say my neck is 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 you know painful, um, uh, what 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 do you look for? Yeah. So one of the first thing I would I would ask someone to do in my screen off the bike is just look up. Mm -hmm. I want to see if they're restricted because when we're riding, we're essentially sitting in a position of cervical extension. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the spine is extended. Um, grab this. Yeah, yeah. Think, let's so take a look. you know, if this, if you are looking up towards the road, there's a lot of 
um, there's a lot of motion that has to occur there. And if there, for some reason there's stiffness or restriction there and you just you can't get that mobility, mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen is you're going you're gonna to jam the vertebrae together and you're going to mm -hmm. get some soreness or there's other structures you certainly could jam as well. Right, right. So the big thing when I'm, when I'm looking at somebody riding, I want to make sure that whatever position they're in, if they're on the hoods or, or the drops would be the most aggressive position, right? Mm -hmm. um, that they still have freedom of motion to look up. Yeah. So when they're riding, I want to see, looking at the road, when they're in that aggressive position, they still have motion. They can still up. move their neck. And, and if they can't, then yeah. I'm, putting them, I'm putting them at end range. Yeah. And we don't, want to, we don't want to hang out at end range for too long because that's when yeah. bad things happen. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, um, using that model, again, let's, yep. let's talk about um, lower back pain. Sure. Um, what, what is going on there? Yeah, so, so a lot of times, um, and again, for, for most, uh, you know, we've all seen those cyclists out there that are riding and they have, that big rounded flex spine, and mm -hmm. it, you know, where they're essentially pushing themselves back, and their back is rounded. And a lot of times that happens yeah. because of pure, I'm not comfortable in my saddle position. Mm -hmm. And right, we probably so they, can yeah, they do a whole themselves. talk about that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, so they're rounding their back to get the pressure off, um, you know, the the perianal region and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is they're going to start to put a lot of pressure on the front of the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, too much pressure on the front of the vertebrae, there's fluid in there, and that fluid will tend to migrate to the back of the, of the, of the disc, mm -hmm. and over time can start to bulge and create a tear in the disc. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's not gonna happen in one ride. This is gonna be years and years and years of riding, and mm -hmm. you have some really strong riders that ride with a, a too much curve to their lower back. Yeah. And it's a lot of times um, years later. And, yeah. um, and now you're trying to change the way that rider's positioned on the bike, and it can be you can be met with a lot of um, a lot of impedance there sure. because I'm doing it for so long. Yeah. But biomechanically, if you're riding with too much flex in your spine, that disc does bulge back and mm -hmm. and unfortunately you herniate. Well, the the nerves right there. Yeah. And so that's where you can get these riders that when that nerve gets irritated, they start to get some pain into the buttock, pain mm -hmm. down the back of the leg, and they start to feel like it's a, a tightness. Well, it, a lot of times it's actually nerve irritation that's caused because of that poor spine position. So, right. again, that's where it comes down to really making sure that cyclists can hold that spine in a neutral, yeah. uh, or the pelvis in a neutral position. Right, right. So it, and it, the symptom is not necessarily a, a sore back at the end of the ride. It, yeah. it can be... Um, yeah, sometimes it shows up as, right. as what people perceive as a hamstring or calf right. tightness or cramping, yeah. and it's actually the static nerve from right. the back. Well, are there, are there any other injuries um, that, that you can describe using the model there? I mean, we've yeah, well, and, and, and this is a great little uh, test I have my clients do, too. But, you know, the thoracic spine in general, this, this part of the back, uh, again, if that's, if that's locked out, it's really going to limit your ability to, um, you know, to be able to look up and to move and to hold your shoulders in the right position. Right. So in general, and you can do this, if you roll your shoulders forward mm -hmm. and then try to look up, how restricted that feels. Now, if we bring those back and try to look up, we can yeah, feel a lot, a lot more freedom, more right? So, yeah. again, being able to elongate your spine, right, and get your spine essentially, you know, long over the bike. If you're compact and round, that's not the way we're going to yeah. be able to generate force, and we're going to put pressure um, on areas that aren't supposed to be supposed to be pressurized. Right. I see. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I know the feeling of of being in the drops and 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 having my neck absolutely up all the time in order to um, see where I'm going. I'm clearly the, the, the um, what the head tube or the spacers yeah. underneath the stem where we're not big enough. Um, yeah. not and on the flip <laughs> side, there's been cyclists that we see that buy a bike and, you know, the bike mm -hmm. shop um, did their job and they put the, the bars kind of all the way up because they don't know how aggressive they want to be. Right. But they're so high, they're actually they actually can't stretch out to get the spine long, and so you drop mm -hmm. them a, a spacer or two, mm -hmm. um, and they actually feel a lot better because they're able to yeah. get that thoracic spine a bit more mobile and stretched out. Oh, that's great. So so um, right. So if if you're suffering, your back is hurting, your legs or knee is hurting, um, there is a there is a solution. There's and, there's and, a solution, and the and the nice the good news is if it's suffering because of pain while you're on the bike. Um, it's a pretty quick fix. Really? It's usually a setup yeah. and people will leave feeling better. Yeah. You know, if it's an injury that's been nagging for a period of time and now it's bugging with you day to day, there probably needs to be more intervention with physical therapy. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times the bike fit can be a, can be a one time, yeah. uh, a one time gig to get you set up correctly. That's great. I mean, and your, your bike fitting is, is different from the, in a way, um, than the standard bike fit. Um, 
um, because you're looking at it from a, a physio, physical therapist exactly. point of view. Um, uh, do you uh, do you switch out parts? I mean, are, yeah. Is so um, so I do I do I have a t I have a ton of um, uh, saddles in regards to just being able to try. So mm -hmm. we don't sell parts, right? And mm -hmm. I have some I have some uh, various size stems as well. Mm -hmm. Again, now a lot with the integrated things that can be challenging. So I can typically extrapolate measurements right. when we figure out where patients need to be and, and tell them you, you know you need to get a I see. Right. Uh, an eight degree hundred ten millimeter stem kind of thing, right. and then when they get it. Bring it back, and we'll we'll, we'll set it we'll up. Set up for you. Yeah. So, so you're not you're not you're not selling bikes. You're not selling right. parts and all right. that. Right. And that's my limitation. Is yeah. I don't. I'm not a. You know. I'm not a you're shop. Not a bike so shop. I don't no, sell but the parts. That's all right. But. I mean, you you can talk bikes yeah. fluently. I'm, right. I'm certain. Well, are there any um, um, stories that come to mind that that um, that sort of sum up what can happen if um, you know you see a physical therapist and and get your bike sorted out? Um, are there any stories you can share that that, um, that are you know inspiring in that yeah. regard? Yeah, I mean the good news now with the with the days of power meters and how accessible they are, mm -hmm. uh, and how many people use them, you can actually quantify the bike fit because you can see an immediate improvement in good. power, and the, and you know how lo how long it can mm -hmm. take athletes to gain, you know, 15, 20 watts yeah. um, on their on the you know. And maybe it's maybe it's a placebo. Maybe they're just pushing harder. But yeah. when you're in a more aligned position, it is easier to generate. It is much easier to generate um, on power. You know, if you're yeah. stable through your spine and your pelvis, you can you can, and you're not moving around up top. That energy is going to be going into the pedal. So, yeah. uh, so they do see that. Um, I mean, one story in particular. I remember a woman, uh, the bike main event, which is like a seven-day event. They ride about 70 miles a day or so, and mm -hmm. she was probably three weeks from the event as she came with neck pain. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, uh, we. For the reasons we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, we had to we had to bring her up. She was kind of hanging out in end range. Right, right. So um, yeah, we we, we did the whole we fit her bike. Yeah, yeah, the whole valve fit her up. Gave her a couple of things to do in the evenings at camp. You know, when she was when she had her, her downtime every day, oh, and she emailed me a week later and and really was able to complete it with no pain at all. So um, it really can it can be a pretty quick um, process if you get on it, especially if you get on it early. Right. Right. Well, that's great. Um, that's great, Jared. I mean, thanks so much for, for coming down and, and, and providing this um, perspective because um, you know, there's so many cyclists I know who are out there and, and um, their knees hurt and, um, and they might think it's something wrong with the bike and you know, that it's the end of the world. But um, all it is is really just a, a, a visit um, to, to you know, a physical therapist who can put them on the, on the right path. So inspiring stuff. Thanks so much. Hi, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Zentis, performance carbon wheels handmade in Austria for road and off-road riding. Zentis, next generation wheels. And Frame and Wheel eBay Bike Selling Services. Time, space, cash, pick three. And AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro-Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future.